Hi, I'm Julian Frost, N3JF, your ham radio sensei. Onegaishimasu. 2022 marked the return of the Dayton Ham Vention to the Green County Fair and Expo Center in Xenia, Ohio. This was the 70th anniversary of the Hamvention and was labeled as the Reunion. Ham Radio Outlet was there, of course, and I walked the Hamvention halls to see what was there. In this video, I spoke with Scott Honecker of ICOM America about the SHF P1 and the ICPW2. Well, my name's Scott Honecker. I'm here in the ICOM booth representing a couple of our new products today. Uh, the first project we have here is a product is a, is a project radio. They're calling it the SHFP1 for Project 1. Uh, it's not, uh, not functional yet at this point, but it's an interesting design and a potential view of the future. It, uh, this, we already have, uh, with our ICOM 9700, we have VHF, UHF, and 1.2 gigs. The next two bands are 2.4 gigs and 5.7 here. And so this radio does those two bands. Um, it's kind of an all mode rig, it has a spectrum scope. It looks very similar. In fact, it's in the same chassis as the ICOM 705. So the menus and everything are very, very similar. But what's different is there's no RF in that box. What it has is power coming in and the cable coming out on the right is a ethernet cable. It's power over ethernet and it runs up to a band unit that is mast mounted, because at these frequencies you have very, very high losses. So you want really short feed lines. So the idea is you mount this band unit up all the way up at the top of your mast, right behind your antennas, and you can run super short feed lines, one for 5.7 gigs and one point for 2.4 gigs. That third antenna that you see on there is for GPS, to help it get a little GPS locking for the, for the uh, frequency stability. Um, we don't have a lot of details on it yet because it literally still, well, it doesn't even have a product ID, really. And uh, so we, we don't have a lot more information, but it's, it's potentially, it's the potential to be a whole new line of product, right, with, with separate band units and Ethernet connectivity all the way down, uh, you know, from the radio to the, to the heads. And if you're ready here, we can go over next door and look at the, the new amplifier. This is the ICOM PW2. The little face plate in there is actually removable. The head can actually either mount there or it can be mounted separately on a little stand. It has a little uh, set of magnets on the back of it so that it little, literally just snaps to that stand and then the cable connects it up to the back. Uh, in the old amplifier, you actually had to do a little surgery on it and pull it apart and pull the head out. With this, you can just pop it off and put it on the stand. On the back, the, the biggest feature is well, over the PW1, it's half the size and half the weight. It has a switching power supply. It has uh, uh, LDMOS finals, so uh, 65 volts, so they're very, very clean. Um, it's also designed for SO2R, so single operator, two radio. Uh, so you'll see two radio inputs there, two different band selection options. Uh, and then on the right, you're gonna see six outputs for different antennas. So you can have up to six antennas connected to two different radios. And then back in the middle, you're gonna see a, a receive antenna loop that can be used for those BNC connectors there. They can be used for an outboard pass, uh, bandpass filter set. So you can have a receiver going and the transmitter going at the same time. And then you've got the basic connectivity for either ICOM or other brand radios. And in the center, you'll also see a LAN connector uh, for uh, external software and to control the unit. The, the brochure we have says it's fully controllable via software that is yet, yet to come. And then there's a remote jack for running uh, external devices like the uh, stepper antenna or some other external device that happens to understand our, the CIV protocol. And so those are, that, the, that one's still, uh, we're still looking at maybe a year to 18 months. If things go better, um, the engineering's pretty done. It's a really nice looking unit. Doesn't seem like it actually has to be under glass, but uh, it did seem to be pretty nice when we were messing around with it earlier. Uh, but uh, you know, production issues and shipping issues are still gonna be uh, causing additional delays. So we'll see, it should be out here soon.